Hi friends, Rob Renfro with Good News. I haven't spoken with you this way since General Conference, but some things have happened recently that made me want to speak with you as directly and as personally as possible. By now you may have heard that this past week the Western jurisdiction elected as Bishop Karen Oliveto. Reverend Oliveto, has publicly stated that she herself has performed over 50 marriages for same gendered persons. And she's also been very public that she is married to her female partner. This has put the church in a crisis. Why did the Western jurisdiction do this? It's possible because they actually want schism within the church. And if that's their desire, they could not have come up with a better way of bringing us to the brink of schism and maybe even ensuring that it will happen. Another possibility is they wanted to signal to the entire denomination that our bishops are powerless or unwilling to enforce the Book of Discipline. And therefore, let all progressives know that they are now free to marry whomever they desire to come out as practicing partnered pastors to same gendered persons and that there will be no repercussions whatsoever. We are in a place that we have never been before. Let me provide for you some additional context. Leading up to general conference and at annual conferences immediately thereafter, a total of five annual conferences have voted non-compliance with the Book of Discipline, meaning that they will no longer require that their pastors be in monogamous, heterosexual relationships, they will be free to be in partnered homosexual relationships, and no longer will they discipline pastors for marrying persons of the same gender. In addition to that, at least four boards of ordained ministry have said that they will no longer require celibacy in singleness or monogamy in heterosexual marriage, but that they are open to persons in partnered gay relationships being ordained within their annual conferences. And on top of that, two of our jurisdictions have voted non-compliance with the Book of Discipline. Friends, this is a very different place than we have ever been. These are not individual pastors breaking our covenant. These are not individual bishops being unwilling to enforce the Book of Discipline with any kind of real integrity. This is now on a systemic level. This is mass rebellion within the church and no one seems willing or able to hold them accountable. The best analogy that I have heard to describe where we are presently is that we are married to an unfaithful spouse, a spouse who has broken the covenant that we each made to each other a spouse that has proclaimed that she will continue to break the covenant that she made with us, with the rest of the church. Friends, this is not an easy thing. This cannot be glossed over with happy words. If you were like I at jurisdictional conference, you heard many happy words. You learned a lot of happy talk, that we believe in unity, that we reject the narrative of schism, but no one offered a plan that would hold us together. And these happy words that got applause and that made the speaker feel very gratified, they don't help us unless there's some kind of plan. They make the kind of conversation that we need more difficult because it tells us that those who are supposed to be holding us together don't really understand the problem, the situation where we are or the depth of our division. How can this situation be addressed? First, the Council of Bishops needs to rise up and with one voice denounce this schismatic action on the part of the Western jurisdiction. They need to renounce the election and the consecration of Reverend Oliveto as bishop. Secondly, they need to call upon her to resign her position. And thirdly, they need to constitute the commission as quickly as possible. And they need to charge the commission to have its work done in time that a called general conference can be held by the end of October 2018. 
and they need to tell the commission to come to general conference with two plans. First, a plan that might hold us together where we can live with integrity as one church. It's a plan that needs to be ratified by at least two thirds of the delegates to that called general conference. And a second plan to be offered if a supermajority cannot be reached. And that is the plan for separation where the church's assets are separated and where traditionalists and progressives are set free to go their own way and to be true to what God has called them to do. Friends, we are in a most difficult place. Here's what I believe. There's going to be a better day for faithful United Methodist. Whether we're able to hold this church together, whether we're able to step into a place of vibrant Westland orthodoxy within this denomination, which I am still bold enough to pray for, or whether there is going to have to be some kind of separation that will set evangelical, orthodox, Westland believers free to pursue a missional church that is committed to converting people to the truth of Jesus Christ, to a place where they experience His grace and find the power of transformation in their lives. If that's what's required, that too will be a better day. It will be a day that God can bless, a day that we will be proud and happy to be a part of but we cannot stay the way that we are now. That should be apparent to everyone. The best thing I know for you to do is one, pray. Two, let your own bishop know how desperate you believe this situation is and to ask him or her to speak out boldly and clearly for the true unity of the church, that he or she will reject publicly this schismatic action. And thirdly, to do everything you can to become fully aware of the Wesleyan Covenant Association. Some of our great evangelical leaders have created a place, an organization, where faithful United Methodist individuals and congregations can come together to support each other, to identify as faithful Wesleyans, to resource each other for doing ministry, and to strategize about the future. Friends, whatever the future looks like, we have to walk into it together. We can walk into it smart, strong, and strategically. I hope you will learn about the Wesleyan Covenant Association. I hope you and many from your church that you will bring with you will be at the convening conference in Chicago on October the 7th. Visit the website, wesleyancovenant.org. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Amen.